Hey YouTubers and RV fans, today on the paddy wagon, working out kinks in a brand new RV. Stay tuned. I went and turned on the propane for the hot water heater and all it did was click once the igniter didn't work at all. So let me share with you a little bit about what I did. First of all, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. That's the first thing. But the biggest thing is really troubleshooting this thing. So the first thing I did was I ran, I read the manufacturer's um, instruction manual that came with that. Uh, with this at water, gas only hot water heater. And of course, I didn't really learn much I learned a little bit. So the next best thing to do is go to YouTube. So here's the igniter here, okay? And it was working without any problems at all. So I started to test the power. You start to test the power with your voltage meters to see if, uh, if everything was getting power and everything looked like it was getting power fine. So then I went to the circuit board and tested the circuit board. I pulled out the uh, igniter here and I ran the voltage meter to this in the course of the ground. And when I turned on the hot water heater, there was no power coming to this, which signifies that the circuit board is history. So pretty much uh, I've had to order a new circuit board. And so that'll be here in a couple days. So now um, we have cold water pretty much in the RV. So that's the first issue I wanted to talk with you about. So hopefully by that, that'll be repaired by next week. So basically what I'm doing is I'm heating hot water up on the stove and you know, using that to wash dishes and taking a shower here at the campsite. So, and you know what, actually the shower at the campsite wasn't so bad, but yeah. So if you're troubleshooting your at water, um, hot water heater, there's a number of things that you need to go through. Well, this video isn't gonna be talking about how to troubleshoot it, but I may do a video in the future. But this hot water heater is just gas only. Now I can convert it over to electric as well, but I'm not gonna do that in this video as well. But it's something I may contemplate doing in the future. Suffice to say, the circuit board's on order, and once that gets in, that'll get replaced and I'll have hot water again. So that's issue number one. Okay, here's issue number two the awning. Now, when we think of an awning, we think that the awning is nicely secured, you know, to the fiberglass with bolts that typically are well in, uh, embedded into the fiberglass, right? Yeah, that's not so much the case. We had a little bit of a wind the other day and we were getting ready to pull the canopy in. Not a big wind though, nothing real significant. And the whole brace here, the whole brace, boom, fell right out of the fiberglass. <laughs> Obviously that was a problem. It bent the frame. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get up there so you can see how the frame looks. I don't know if you can see that on video or not, but it bent the frame and it bent the arms here. So as you can see, I kind of have this jerry rig with uh, bungee cords so that I can have this out. But anyway, what I did was I went back up and I got some bigger screws and I secured it um, for the meantime, because what's going to happen is this is going to have to be a warranty work. So they're going to have to take the, uh, this whole bracing off and either replace it or fix it and then they're gonna have to put some flange screws in there. The only thing they had that was holding this um, canopy up was sheet metal screws, that's it. And there wasn't even any um, uh, decor or any kind of sealant as well. Okay, the next issue is we were sitting outside one evening and started smelling <clears throat> um, this smell like propane. So come down here, I'm looking all around, you know, can't smell, can't see anything, obviously, duh. So we did the, um, the soapy water test. And right here, it was a leak 
And then of course, this piece of contraption was in there, which is a bypass for your, um, your grill. And this was leaking. Let's let it. Right there is a fracture. I'm sure you can see that. So this was leaking, okay? So we took this off completely and just ran the connections from here through to here. And then we put some putty on or some um, mud on there as well as some Teflon and then tighten these things down real good. So there is no more leak coming from the propane tank. Needless to say, for a brand new RV that had a PDI completed, um, check your propane. You know, have them do the soapy water test in front of you so you can see there's no leaks. This is craziness. All right, last but certainly not least is the water here, um, water connections here under the bed. Now, it doesn't look like anything, but there was some moisture down here and it was running off and it was pooling over here. So, I'm not sure what happened, but it stopped. But nonetheless, another area that has to be watched because it looks like the hot water, when it gets hot, maybe expanding the joint. And then when it reduces, the joint cools off and allows some leakage. Not a lot, just enough to be aggravating. So, another thing that just has to be monitored. Okay, so there were four items that I should have checked in the PDI that I didn't. The canopy issue, I should have checked because I saw the bolts and they looked odd to me, but I just thought, oh well, that's, you know, that's just, you know, sealant around them but it wasn't sealant, okay? It was, um, looked like, I wanna say either sheet metal screws or drywall screws that were just screwed in to the fiberglass and literally the bracing just fell out. Well, so check your awning on your PDI. So if you're buying a new RV, check the awning, bracing, and screws to make sure that your awning is fastened to your fiberglass. Don't be crazy like me. Number two, check under the bed or wherever your water connections are and make sure there's no moisture. If there's any moisture, stop. Make them fix it, okay? Now, we're excited about getting an RV. You're happy about getting an RV. So sometimes you might overlook things and they take you through the PDI and they're showing you so many things and sometimes the PDI lasts an hour, hour and a half. You know, check your water fittings check outside check inside check under the bed check where your fresh fresh water tank is make sure your fresh water tanks working you know check your outside shower make sure that the outside shower is working have them turn the hot water tank on so that when you're out there checking the outside shower you can also simultaneously check to make sure you have hot water okay there's really nothing you're going to do about your hot water tank issue number three if the circuit board goes it goes you know, but fortunately all of this is under warranty, but nonetheless, you know, it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. You know, you're a thousand miles away from the place where you purchased, you know, and you got things that have to be fixed. If you are buying a new RV, make sure if it's a new RV, even if it's not a new RV, make sure that you are, make sure that you're really doing a strong PDI. All right, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough for me today. Uh, thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks for following. Thanks for subscribing. And everybody have a great day.